everyone, welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung, and let's do a general overview of a TCP IP packet. So not all the options, but most of the, the main ones, and we'll cover the more complicated stuff in later videos. So what we're covering today is a TCP IP packet. And TCP IP packet has uh, lots of different sections in it. But the main sections, we could divide it up into a header. So we've got a header right here. Contains a lot of the control information, the IP addresses, the port numbers, stuff like that. We've got a data portion, which fills up most of the packet. So this is data also known by a lot of people, they call it the payload. So this would actually contain stuff like your web traffic, this would be your actual email contents, that type of stuff. And then you've got the last part, which is your footer. Usually we'll have some type of checksum information, just so if the packet gets garbled, the routers will know what to do with it, which will be usually to drop it and ask for the packet again. So we've got a header in the front, we've got the data payload, which is the main part of the packet, and we have some type of footer, which contains some checksum information. Now generally the packet will be approximately, total size will be approximately 1,500 to about 1,512 bytes. So 1,500 to 1,512 bytes kind of depends on what routers it's going through, how it's being fragmented, and a lot of other stuff. Okay, so the parts of the, that's the three main parts. Inside of the header, we're going to expand this out a little bit. And we're going to talk about the different parts of the header. There's several of them. There is one of the main ones is called a TTL, time to live. Now this time to live, what it is, it's a number that gets decremented by one. So every time it passes through a router, it's decremented by one. So let's say if it starts off at, uh, let's say 255, as it passes through one router, it's going to minus one, and it's going to now be 254. And then the next router is going to minus 1, and now it's going to be 253. And eventually, if it doesn't get to its destination, eventually it might hit 0. If the TTL hits 0, then it's killed. The packet is killed. And the reason there is a TTL is it's to prevent loops on the Internet. Okay, So as you can imagine, on the Internet, this might be your PC here. And we've got a router here. And we've got another router here. And then this is the website you want to eventually reach. And this might be eBay. You go look up your auctions. It sends a packet towards the first router. First router gets it, sends a packet towards the second router. But something's wrong. Let's say this link is cut and this second router, for some whatever reason, sends the packet back. Now what you have is a loop because this router, if something's wrong, maybe it doesn't know the complete details of this break here, it might send the packet back to the first, the second router. And around and around we go. We've got this packet that just sort of circles around, just completely oblivious to what's happening. If there was no TTL, it would just storm and keep on going, right? Not a good situation at all. But because of this TTL, every time it hits this router, it's minus one, goes over here, minus one again. Eventually, it hits zero, and then a signal is sent to the PC and says, well, that packet has been killed. So that is the reason for the TTL, one of the very important pieces of the TCP IP header. Okay, 
as we continue down into the header, let's move this down a little bit, we've got a source address and a destination address. So if we were to expand this, just the header piece out, we've got a source address, sometimes labeled as SA. This is the IP address of the sending computer or the router destination address. This is the IP address of the final destination. Both are pretty self-explanatory. Then we've got a source port, SP. Source port could be, probably usually is a random number if it's created by a computer. So it might be something like 20,000, 30,000, something like that. We've got a destination port, and the destination port is how the receiving computer or router knows where to send this packet. What application do we send this packet? And there's a bunch of well-known port numbers. We've got port 80, which is World Wide Web, HTTP. We've got port 21 and 22. This is for FTP. Okay. Actually, we've got, uh, this is actually going to be port 20 and 21 is going to be FTP. We've got port 22, which is SSH. And just a whole bunch of different numbers that have been agreed upon by international standards to stand for certain applications. Okay, we've got a, another part in the header that's also very important. We've got a sequence number sequence number. So why do we have a sequence number? Well, if you remember, the maximum size of this packet is somewhere between 1500 and 1512 bytes. Now, a web page, your average web page could be very large. These days, there's a lot of pictures, there's a lot of videos. So an average web page could be in the neighborhood of 500 kilobytes, 400,000 bytes. So we obviously can't fit an entire website into the data portion of the packet, so we need to chop it up. And you could think of this as you're trying to email or you're trying to mail a big encyclopedia using just letters well, you're going to rip apart the encyclopedia and stuff pages one through three in the first letter, uh, four through six in the next letter, and so on. But you need to mark the letters with a sequence number, and that way the router and the computer on the other side knows how to order things up. So what's going to happen here is if you try to go to a website, you might have a sequence number sequence number of one, and this is going to contain bytes zero through 1500. For the next packet, 1501 through 3000, and so on until the page is done. Okay, so sequence number one, sequence number two, sequence number three, and so on. Now normally, this sequence number doesn't follow nice numbers like this. They're going to be very big numbers, and the router just keeps track of what the next sequence number is. But in our case, just for demonstration purposes, we'll say the first sequence number is 1, 2, 3, 4, and it keeps going until the web page is done. At the very end or near the end of the header is something called a checksum. checksum and what it is is it checks to make sure there has been no errors in the rest of the header. All right, so that's a quick overview of a TCP IP packet. Just as a quick review, there are three main parts. There's a header, contains IP addresses, protocols, port numbers, checksums, all that good stuff. The main part is the data and payload. The last part is the footer 
which contains some type of checksum and an entire TCP IP packet will generally be around 1500 to 1512 bytes. And then we covered the parts of the header. We've got a source address, a destination address, source port, destination port. We've got a sequence number which keeps track of which packet number it is on because generally websites and BitTorrent and all that stuff the data is going to be definitely greater than 1500 bytes and we've got some checksum information also in the header to catch any errors or garbled information. In future videos we'll cover some of these options in more detail but for now thanks for watching.